South of Bonn, north of Koblenz, lies the little town of Remagen, an unimportant place, but for the crumbling German armies, perhaps the most fateful place all down the long course of the Rhine. For over the battered Remagen Bridge in mid-March, the only bridge captured intact, American tanks, trucks, artillery and troops were pouring in a slow but steady stream. In the first days before the bridgehead was safely established, engineers worked desperately to repair the twisted girders before the bridge collapsed. They measured the time in hours first, then in days. And while they worked, the divisions of the First Army passed to the east bank. And the Luftwaffe, desperate to make good the Wehrmacht blunder, flung in scores of planes. But it was already too late. When the bridge went down 10 days after its capture, collapsed from the weight of transport over its damaged girders, for the enemy, the worst had already been done. It was the heroic engineers who had battled so hard to save the bridge, who paid the heaviest price when it was lost. Flung headlong into the water, some were drowned, some died of injuries, some were seriously hurt and were pulled out more dead than alive. was lost. But other bridges had already been erected, and every man who could be spared joined in the job of rescue. The engineers, dead and injured here, will not figure in battle citations. They conquered no strong points. They took no cities. They captured no prisoners. There were no battle stars for death on the Raymargan Bridge. But because by their efforts and theirs alone the bridgehead was made possible, because by their heroism the costly attack by storm was avoided, each man who died here died for a hundred of his comrades. By however many hours or days or weeks they shortened the war, they shortened it for us all. The Raymargan Bridgehead is established. Outside the town of Rheinbrawl on the east bank, civilians are herded into the fields to escape the firing. North to the Bonn Plain, south to the Frankfurt Gap, the First Army moves forward, outflanking the whole central Rhine line of the weakening German armies. Meanwhile, cutting into the Tsar Basin from north and south, Allied armies tore great holes in the enemy line. Up from Alsace, down from the Moselle, over from the borders of Luxembourg, the great drive went on with a speed and fury not seen since the days of the Normandy breakthrough. came in, in their hundreds and thousands, dispirited and beaten men. Bonn fell and Mainz, and Worms and Kaiserslautern, and the great city of Koblenz where the Moselle flows into the Rhine. Here there was a short, bitter fight. Into this city, battered by bombing and shell fire, the tanks went in, routing out the enemy from his strong points. This was a pattern victory. The sort that comes with such speed, the enemy is left bewildered and utterly lost.
After the tanks came the infantry. From house to house, cleaning out the snipers, the machine gun nest, there was no stopping them, for they knew that this was to be the last great action before the Allied armies struck over the Rhine. More prisoners came in. Some had already changed into civilian clothing, but it did them little good. Koblenz fell, and they joined their 200,000 comrades captured in the great route west of the Rhine. <laughs> 